for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video I'll be giving an introduction into co-fermentation. This is where we use more than one type of beer yeast to obtain a mixture of results within our fermentation. I would like to begin by reinforcing the simple fact that there is no other single ingredient that is used during the beer making process that is more important than yeast. Put simply, as brewers we are creating hop balanced sugar water. It is the yeast that transforms this into our end beer. These days we are very used to having single yeast strains that have been isolated for their effects, which are very specific. Yeast has been set out into categories for beer, wine, cider and so on, and is then narrowed down into specific styles. As such, when yeast is isolated like this, it will imprint a very standardised result, which is very repeatable. However, you only need to look at older style breweries in Belgium and the UK, and you will find house multi-strain yeast. Naturally, Norwegian farmhouse brewing also uses multi-strain yeast too. One commercial brewery in Norway known as Eggkogtid, which translates as Oak and Thyme, has also created an in-house fake yeast mix of over 20 different strains. I have a video on my channel as shown on screen now that was released in 2019 that covers their process as a brewery, including the blending of fake yeast. Please do understand that to make a mix of this many strains work takes a great degree of skill, and the process should be taken a strain at a time. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here as naturally many home brewers are so used to the simple approach of using specific strains for specific style results. But why would we want to blend yeast in the first place? Let's look at that now. This can be as simple as experimenting with the flavours of different yeast esters and putting them together to create a combination of flavour. Having a greater diversity of flavour is a very powerful tool, and this has been going on in the background in many craft breweries for a number of years. And this is particularly popular within the craft beer market who are looking to provide new and interesting flavours for an over a public for something new. This also allows craft breweries to create something secret and thus interesting, because they can then say that it was fermented with house yeast. Furthermore, you can be reassured that beer yeast does not have competitive strains or a kill factor that can be found with some wine yeast strains. When you are using multiple strains for flavour, it is best to add these at the same time. It is a well known fact that the flavour element given by yeast is formed within the first 12 to 36 hours of fermentation. So when pitching more than one type of yeast for flavour, add them all at the very beginning of fermentation so that they can all join the flavour party to be had within your wall. Secondly, you may wish to blend yeast for functionality. This is also a very popular route for commercial breweries of all types. One classic example of this would be to mix British fruity ester yeast with American yeast that has a high attenuation rate. This will give you a fruity ester flavour profile and beer that is dry on the finish. Another example would be using a yeast that has an amazing flavour profile but a slow attenuation alongside a yeast that has a fast attenuation. As I am sure you are already thinking, there are various areas of experimentation here. Firstly, unlike when blending for flavour is when to add each yeast. For flavour we know this requires an early pitch, so when adding a yeast purely for faster attenuation it should be added later on. This will bypass its flavour contribution and focus into its desired effect. I have seen good results here in adding an attenuation yeast after the first yeast has attenuated 30%, but it should be understood that different mixes can produce different results, hence why this is an area of experimentation. For both flavour and functionality blending, fermentation temperature is also a key area for experimentation. You can make this easy for yourself by choosing strains that have a similar optimal fermentation temperature. Naturally blending a low temperature lager yeast with a high temperature owl yeast is something to avoid. You will find that some yeast has more tolerance in general, and as such these strains like Fermentis US05 and Lullamon Nottingham can be ideal pairing partners for various other strains, depending on exactly what you are looking for of course. Equally, some quake yeast is much more tolerant to lower regular owl yeast temperatures like Voss for example. This is actually an ideal quake for home fermentation because it will still work as low as 20 degrees C or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or in some cases even lower. Pairing quake for its super fast conditioning properties can give some fantastic benefits in strong styles for example, because you will not have to wait as long for the final beer. 
Finally, one other area to experiment with is the actual pitch rate for each yeast during co-fermentation. There are many choices here that will be dictated by your objectives. So for example, your choices will need to be different if you are staggering your pitching compared to if you are pitching all yeast from the start. Naturally, you need enough yeast to do the job, but depending on your fermentation methods and equipment, you may wish to go easy on having too much yeast within your fermentation vessel too. It is also important to keep in mind that when it comes to regular yeast it is often better to over pitch rather than under pitch. The opposite is true of Craig. Though if you are using the Lonamond or Mangrove Jacksfoss then please do realise that they are having a formulation that is different when used from the sachet to regular Craig, which is unlike Craig in commercial liquid form. However if you reculture this then the regular Craig pitching rates apply as advised in other Craig related videos on my channel. Let's now look at blended yeast reculturing. Firstly, it is very important to understand that it is going to be very hard to reculture a blend from your fermenter at the same ratios that you pitched originally. Really, the only secure way to perform the same fermentation again is to use the same mix of commercial isolated yeast each time. Having said this, you may find the results very interesting anyway, even if the ratios are different. So for me, this is one of the marvels of Craig yeast in the sense that it gradually changes over generations. Each time you reculture, your results will slowly start to change due to mutation. Chances are you will probably not notice much of a change until you pass four to five generations. But it is key to understand that the more strains you have in a mix, the faster the mutation is going to be. As indicated at the start, this video is an introduction to this topic and I will be doing follow-up videos with more specific guides in the future. Personally, I've been experimenting with blending Craig yeast with regular yeast for quite some time now and I've built up some great conclusions in this time, but there is still a lot to experiment with here. One of my focus areas of experimentation has been around blending Belgian yeast with Quake yeast, the objective being to have the Belgian yeast influence and flavours alongside the Quake for a much faster turnaround period. Look out for my future Belgian beer style guides, these will cover the usual level of information that viewers have come to expect from my guides, plus blending advice for co-fermentation. You can also be sure that as 2021 unfolds further, that I will have more content of this type on the horizon, covering other types of beer styles too. This is also a topic that I will be taking up with this channel's Facebook group, and like with pressure fermentation, I will be hoping that our membership can record and share results of their co-fermentations for the benefit of all. Testing certainly takes time, but we can get an awful lot more done if we all work together. If you are not a member of the group, then links are shared on screen now. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!